Oh, welcome to week two of RJ's Bets, combined with Teeing Off podcast, doing this little video series, so I can hopefully give you guys a reason to make some money. All right, so week two, week one last week was the Sony Open. I picked Matt Kuchar in my top five to win, so hopefully you picked that. But I'll get into my previous week at the end. But for this week, we've got the Desert Classic PGA Tour's Desert Classic. I believe it used to be called the Career Builder. It is the 60th anniversary of the Desert Classic. It previously before that was called the Bob Hope Classic. Uh, so <laughs> take with that what you will. Take it with a grain of salt. But that's what it's named. It is the first stop, of course, in 2019 on the U.S. mainland. 12 of the top 30 ranked golfers should be in the field. Uh, you can get access to the full field and tee times through my blog on teeingoffblog.com. The course. This is one of those tournaments that has three courses in rotation. So the TPC Stadium course at PGA West, a 7,113-yard par 72. That will be the main course, so everyone will play their final round there and one of their other first three rounds. The other two courses in the rotation, PGA West Nicholas Tournament Course and La Quinta Country Club. Last year, John Rahm won with a 266 total. It's different. It's hard, kind of hard to combare, combine, like, minus usually i'd put like minus 20 minus 18 whatever but uh with the rotation changing all the time it's kind of hard to compare um strokes under par so the last three winners john rom hudson swafford and jason duffner tv times for this event we got thursday to sunday 3 to 7 p.m on the golf channel so a little better times than the hawaiian swing let's get into the good stuff though handicap in the field okay so just like last week, I do a spreadsheet every week. You can access the full spreadsheet on teeingoffblog.com. But for the sake of this video, I look at betting odds. I rank that. Then rank the field based on that. Recent form, same thing. Tournament history, stats ranking, and a simulator ranking. I get that simulator from fantasynational.com. These two come together to form an average, and then a final ranking is determined. So I rank the field 1 through 100. And I also list the difference in original ranking to my ranking. So, without further ado, the top 10, my top 10 player for this week. Now, keep in mind, I make a bet on the top five. So, the top 10. Charles Howell is first for me. He ranks fourth in odds at 20 to 1. He's second in this tournament, or sorry, second in recent history. An eighth, a 14th, a first, and a missed cut in his last four events. On this course, or sorry, in this tournament, in these courses, he has finished 20th, 12th, 11th, 50th, and 58th. That ranks sixth in the field. His stat rank is all, sorry, his sim simulation rank has him sixth. His stat rank has him eighth. So that everything across the board inside the top 10, his average ranking in my spreadsheet is 5.2. That puts him in number one spot. For this week in my books, I've got John Rahm in second. He is the top in terms of odds, he's the top guy at 7-1, to one, but he's been playing really well as of late, an 8th and a 1st place finish. He won here last year, so obviously he likes the course. Um, ranks 5th in the simulation rankings, so he uh, he looks to bounce back and have a good week here. Lucas Glover sitting 3rd. His best stats are the... He suits well in, the, in my stats ranking, where I throw all the stats together, combine it into one. He is third in that and eighth in uh, his ranking on this course. So he comes third. He's actually tied in third with Chez Reevy. Chez Reevy, recent form, third and 26th recently. And on this course, he has done 36th, 12th, 17th, and a missed cut. So he bodes well. And then wrapping up the top five for giving details, wrapping up the top five, Adam Hadwin comes in in fifth. He is at 28 to 1. He has fared really, really well in this tournament. Third last year, second the year before that, sixth the year before that, and 48th prior to that. So three top tens in his last three starts here. He also has the right type of game. His stats really um, bode well for this course. So that is the top five. The rest of the top ten, Richie Wierenski at number six, Ryan Palmer at number seven, Patrick Cantlay at number eight, Scott Piercy, number nine, and Sung J M number ten. I'm not, and that's my rankings. I'm not going to go through, obviously, the entire 100 players in their rankings, but uh, again, feel free to take a look, teeingoffblog.com. My best bets this week, 
Again, outright to win, I go top five. So Charles Howell, John Rahm, Lucas Glover, Ches Reeve, and Adam Hadwin. We had Matt Kuchar in this last week at 40 to 1. So hopefully we can get two in a row. Top fades, guys that fell way down my board. Danny Willett is my top fade. Do not bet on Danny Willett. And if you can bet against him, bet against him. He's down 49 spots in my rankings from 25 to 74. Russell Henley is down 48 spots in my ranking. Brian Harmon is down 44 spots. So try and avoid those guys, or if you see chances for matchups against those guys, take them. Speaking of matchups, my top matchups this week. Last week, I was 3-1 and one in matchups. This week, I have four again. Chez Reeve defeats Abraham Answer. Sung J Im defeats Kevin Kisner. Zach Johnson defeats Charles Swartzel. And Ryan Palmer defeats Peter Uline. Those are my four picks for matchups this week. Again, I always recommend doing matchups because even if you have a perfect idea of who what type of player you think is going to win who's hot it's golf you're never going to be able to pick the winner every week um even if, if you can get like a couple in a year it's pretty impressive so i'm happy with my one and two so far i'm not expecting to hit the winner again this week but maybe the spreadsheet will come through again uh, so those are my four top matchups again always do matchups to keep some money in your account year to date so so far it's only been two events i've had 10 picks my top five that I always bet on for two consecutive weeks. Six of those ten picks finished in the top ten. So, doing pretty good so far. The spreadsheet's working out. I picked the winner last week, so I'm one for two in picking the winner. And, as I mentioned, three wins, one loss this season on the matchups. So, we'll look to improve on that again this week. And uh, hopefully get to maybe like six and two, something like that. So, thank you for watching. Check out teeingoffblog.com for all details on this tournament. A more in-depth look at the spreadsheet, all of that. Follow me on Twitter at R-J-M-C-C-U-L-L-O-U-G-H. And let me know what you think.